presentation is reading a student story with the student profile data. Um, and uh, these are presenters that are going to do this um, in the conference I talked about earlier. So the objectives, the learning targets for today is how to read the student data story in the SLDS student profile. Now, you're getting a lot of new students this year. And uh, if you're hopefully uh, in Newton County, your student profiles will be uploaded in pre-planning so you can actually get to know your students before you see them. Uh, I taught in DeKalb County Schools for 37 years, and I know even in year 37, the night before, which is usually a Sunday, I had trouble sleeping. Why? I was afraid. What kind of students am I going to get? Um, it made me very nervous, and I had done it for 37 years. What I found out is when we have fear like that, the best way to overcome fear is to get more data, get facts. And so the more you know about your students, the more confident you're going to be, the more prepared be, the more you're planning for teaching them is going to be because you're going to know where they are. So you can look at your students as a group. You can go to my schedule on your uh, SLDS dashboard and you click on your class and you'll see all the demographics on your students. And every time you see in any report on the left side, student names are always hyperlinked and you can actually go through and look at different students. Now, an elementary school teacher, that's easy to see all your students fairly quickly. High school teachers and middle school teach a lot of students, and, you know, they may take a little time to go through them. But I really encourage you, and you're going to learn today why you want to see student profiles. And then particularly when you have a student that's struggling in your classroom, going to their profile, preparing for a student parent conference, all of these things are really helpful to review their profile. So, again, uh, the second bullet understand the types of data provided in the student profile. What are the facts about the student that we are going to see? Somebody needs to mute their microphone, please. Yeah. Picking up some background sound. So in the third book, how to use student profile to differentiate instruction. So the SLD, here's some things just to know about the SLDS student profile. The SLDS student profile uses student data to tell their academic journey. I just logged story. into SLDS student profile, I guess is what they're talking okay. about. Oh, okay. That's good. Yeah, but I'm going to put you. us in again. Okay. Thank you, Heather. So the presentation, so we're all seeing the PowerPoint, right? Okay. All right. Uh, if you wanted to log into your SLDS, you can do it on a different window on, a, on your computer, of course. I should, I should have said that. Um, but bullet number three, you're going to see the student's demographic data, their lexile history, their assessment history, their milestones growth, their enrollment history, and transcripts. This will paint a picture that describes the student's unique strengths and weaknesses. The story told can assist educators in quickly getting to know the student and creating a plan to promote achievement. This story can be shared with parents to help them participate in setting goals to promote their child's learning. And on the profile or any report you see in SLDS, you will see an icon of a floppy disk where you can download this to say Microsoft Word. And you can actually, when you have it in Word, you can edit Word, you can put a place for parents to sign their name and use the facts about the student at a conference with the parents. So there's a lot of those kinds of features that you, you have that to use that option. All right. So where is the student profile in SLDS? Well, the easiest way to get to one particular student is at the top of your SLDS dashboard. Uh, there's a, there's a box and it, you can see where it says search by GTID. Now, most of us don't memorize our students' GTID. So most people are gonna to go to number two and that's going to the right of the search by GTID where here you will see the school year, your, your district, your school, and then you're going to go to the um, grade and say you're a middle school teacher and you teach seventh grade so when you click, when you're a high school teacher, you click whatever grade, you know, your students in, 
And then once you click the grade, then to the right, it will populate. It might take a few seconds for it to load. And you have your students' names in alphabetic order. And you can select a student and click the Go button to go to their profile. So when you do click the Go button, please feel free to interrupt me if I go too fast. Uh, you're going to see their student profile. And um, at the top of the profile, sorry, uh, let's, let me go down a little bit. This is what it looks like at the top. And uh, this is looking at the demographics, okay? I've got some slides out of order here, but I, I want to show you, here's a, uh, the demographic student that we're going to read the story. Now, this is an actual student. And, you know, of course, we're under FERPA, and I can't show you an actual student's name. So all the names, the names of the school and the district used here, it's a training site we use, have been obfuscated. Meaning that, um, you know, we, we need for clients, so they're made up. Names. Does somebody have a question? Okay, if you don't have a question, you please mute your microphone so we don't pick up background noise. Okay, so I want to go back. Uh, I'm going the wrong way here. Hang on, I'm getting used to it. What I wanted to show you is we saw, we're going to go back to the student, Rodolfo, in a minute. But when you look at the demographics, Rodolfo, every student is going to have in the demographic box, upper left-hand corner, a name, a grade, a gender, an ethnicity, and a birthday. Everybody will have that, of course. Now, some students will have additional labels. Jasper here is homeless. That's very important as a teacher for you to know if you have a student that's homeless. It could explain why they have body odor, why their clothes aren't clean, and, it, and the... Uh, the type of home life they have, they may be under a lot of stress. So these behaviors may become evident in the classroom. It's just very helpful for you to know this. Um, this student, uh, Demarcus, yeah, is. I'm, I'm just giving you an option. I could take audit by myself at like 2:30. Okay, is somebody talking to me, or did they just have their microphone on? Really is that you, Anna? No, we'll do that. Okay, if you could turn off your audio, that would help. You can talk to people. Okay, so anyway, Demarcus is gifted oh, and homeless. That, that, those are kind of interesting uh, that he is a combination of being homeless and gifted. I, I was very uh, pleased to find such an example. It just goes to show you, every student's very unique and have a different uh, uh, combination of, uh, of experiences. Um, here we have Todd and um, Todd is EL, English language learner, English is a second language, and SST. Oh, looks like Okay, it, this doesn't really match up. I, I'm glad I'm doing this because I need to fix some things today with this. Um, here is Todd, E L L S. I I was on the wrong slide. E-L-S-S-T, okay? So he's an English language learner, E-L-L, and he is being served by the student support team. So, um, again... Anna, could you turn off your microphone? Can you mute? Oh, you had a transportation. I'll just mute her. There we go. I was able to do that. Uh, so we're going to read Rod Rodolfo Abenathy's student story. So this is the student profile. But this is not actually his picture, just the picture I was able to use of a young, of a seventh grade student. Uh, this is a student profile for Rodolfo. He has, you see his name. He's in seventh grade. He is a male. He's white, not of Hispanic origin. His, he was born January 16, 2008. And we see his demographics as we just went over. And now to the right, this is really valuable attendance history. Um, and this student has a very interesting attendance history. You will see in the beginning of his uh, academic journey, 
in his first year, and I believe if last year's 2020, this was probably kindergarten, he missed 40 days. And mm -hmm. even in first grade, 21 days. In um, second grade, 24, third grade, 22. Now, these are very foundational years, particularly for uh, reading, uh, for um, developing uh, his um, reading fluency and math skills. And then we noticed that the attendance got better. It's kind of interesting. Why did he miss so many days? And this would be interesting to have in a conference with a parent. But this tells you is there's going to be gaps in instruction. If you added up all those numbers, and I'll just kind of do them in my head. I'm not going to use a calculator, so I'm going to round numbers off. 40, 60, 80, 85, uh, 105, uh, 110, 115. So he's missed more than a school year of instruction. So when we get to the enrollment history, it'll be interesting to see if he... Uh, repeated some grades. So let's go on to the next uh, data set. Here we have all the state assessments um, we're going to look at, but the first thing we're going to look at is the Lexile score history. Now this comes from the uh, milestones, Georgia milestones, the ELA assessment. Uh, we work with uh, Metametrics, the company that has the copyright of the word Lexile, and come up with a Lexile score based on uh, some of the, uh, the reading that the student, the comprehension student has to have when he's taking the ELA assessment. So this chart shows the stretch Lexile range for each grade level. So the red stars display the student's Lexile level. So you notice in third grade, his score is really in that area below the stretch range, which is that blue gray area in the middle, that he is down near the bottom, reading way below grade level in third grade. And then in fourth grade, it's as the star that he's not really made improvement because you see the space between the first uh, and third grade, the red star and the middle, that space now from that red star in fourth grade is even bigger. Now in the uh, next grade, fifth grade, he's getting closer to the middle but then in sixth grade, falling well, back down. All right, mute. Okay. So anyway, he's uh, he's staying com completely in, in seventh grade. So last year in sixth grade, below grade level. Now that line through the middle is the midpoint, and this. This, this stretch range is where the middle 50% of students are. So below the stretch lane is the lower 25%, above is the upper 25%. Now, in my experience of looking at a lot of student profiles, I have seen students go from the lower 25% to the upper 25%, which to me reflects great teaching and great curriculum when we see students grow like that. Then we have statewide uh, summative assessments. The most recent assessment at the top, uh, which is the 2019-20 Spring Milestones, EOG, ELA, and Math. So the student's assessment will be displayed regardless of the Georgia district and school the student was enrolled in when they took the assessment. So if they were in another school, you will see the assessments here. The data follows well, the student's ID numbers. So when a student comes to Newton County, as soon as they are, um, the GTID is claimed by the registrar, all that data flows in. The data we have in the at the state level is going to be more complete and accurate than the data that you have. Okay. Um, so the assessments are in descending order by administration date. And Rodolfo's Georgia milestones for 2019-20 indicates that he's a beginning learner, the red. You see the legend at the bottom, red is a one, beginning learner. So that one means beginning. And then two would be the orange, which is developing. Three would be proficient. And four, distinguished learner. So he's not doing well in last year in the ELA and math. And even you look back in previous uh, years, uh, is pretty consistent, red and ELA. Uh, and there was some years where he did a little bit better in math. 
Um, the blue assessment is the GKIDS, Georgia Kindergarten Inventory. That, by the way, is the only assessment that measures behavior, uh, even behave, uh, behavior getting along with others, uh, or also motor skills such as uh, holding a pen or pencil, mature grass. Sometimes it's interesting to look at how they did in kindergarten because sometimes you'll see they did not, they did well in kindergarten, say in math and areas, but are not doing well now because your know, parents will like to focus on, well, must be something wrong with you, teacher, because they're not, they're not doing well uh, with you, but you can actually show them and we'll look at the transcript, how they have been struggling in that subject all along. Uh, that's when people really know I was a teacher when I tell them, you know, these parents that always want to shift the blame to you, the teacher, you know, what's wrong with you? Give my kid a break. He never had trouble before. And actually, when you look at the student profile, you'll see, yes, the student did most of the time. It's not all of a sudden they're having trouble with math, for example. Um, anyway, let's go on. The student growth percentile, known as by the acronym SGP, uh, would be the next data set you see in the student profile. Each colored band displays the SGP followed by the scale score. As shown in legend, red equals low growth, green, typical growth, and gold equals high growth. So when you've had two years of a milestone assessment, that first year score he, that the student earns, he's in the cohort of students around the state that got the same score. So we're measuring is, does he stay with that group, which is typical growth, or is he next time around falling behind the group? If the student's exceeding the progress of the group, then that is going to be gold. And that's, you know, he's showing high growth. Here, Rodolfo was in the 11% for growth, low growth in the area of ELA, the three-digit number is the scale score the student earn, earned. Now, if this was the live site, when you hover over the red or the gold, you'll see uh, a finger. That means you can click on it and drill down and see the breakdown of the score. And it will break down, say, ELA by strand. You'll see uh, reading and vocabulary, uh, narrative writing, math, numbers and operations, geometry, algebra, it breaks it down by strand. So that's, that's a, one, a, a good thing to do is to click on it. Um, so let's go on. Um, next, uh, check my time. Um, we're good. Local assessments. Now, I don't remember in Newton County uh, what local assessments you'd use. Some districts do not use any that we um, report. We can show any uh, local assessment that your county uh, contracts with if they, um, you know, contact their vendor and, and give permission, sign off, we can show it in SLDS. So one-stop shop where you as a teacher can see all the data on a student. So there are a lot of districts now in Georgia using the map assessment. Some are using Renaissance Learning, Star Reading, Star Math. Would any, someone click on their mic and let me know uh, if in Newton County do you use map or Renaissance Learning? Don't be shy. Or does it, you don't know? We use Iowa for Iowa, elementary. Okay. All right, thank you. Anybody else? Is that it? Okay. All right. Thank you for your help. Okay. So, but anyway, I won't just go in a lot of detail here since no one said you're using MAP. This is an example of MAP. The neat, the neat thing about the MAP assessment is you they take it three times during the year where you as a teacher have the opportunity to differentiate instruction. Because if you're waiting for the milestone results, they still haven't come in from the spring yet. So they'll be coming in hopefully soon. And it's very helpful for you to know how the students did on milestones that you're teaching this year, uh, last spring. This is the next uh, data set in the student profile story. And that's the student's active schedule called. Um, and in, you can go on your dashboard and click on my, my schedule and you'll see you'll be able to access all of your students in a class. But this student's active schedule in the profile, the value to me is that 
it's helpful sometimes to know what other subjects your students taking uh, when they're in the middle school or uh, who their teachers are, maybe in fourth and fifth grade where uh, they're taking different teachers are teaching math and ELA to them and can and have, you know, when you're trying to help a student who's falling behind and talk with the other, the other teachers that are teaching that student. Next, we see their enrollment history. Teachers used to never see this um, because they just didn't have access until SLDS to see all the schools they've been in. And, and very importantly, uh, the if they uh, change schools. Uh, so you even have the withdrawn enrollment date. So when you look at Rodolfo's history, if you go down to the bottom, you see kindergarten. He was in the Fairmont School. Now this is obfuscated, so these are made up names of schools. And then uh, you notice that he was uh, in, put in the SST program in first grade, still in the Fairmont School. In second grade, still in the same school, third grade, same school. But now you see in third grade on September the 1st, transferred to another public school system in Georgia does not include DJJ. Now, the acronym DJJ means Department of Juvenile Justice. Now, that wouldn't apply to an elementary school anyway. Students won't be in the DJJ in elementary, uh, that age group. And so the next school is the California San Diego District. Okay, again, it's a made up name. Notice the date withdrawn uh, was uh, September 1st. The, the date enroll in next school, September 3rd. That's good. That's only a two day gap two days of instruction loss, and it could have been a weekend. But I had a teacher once that had, and this was during the school year, not the summer, a student that was, there was a gap of two months between school. Again, when we looked at the attendance before, that two months is not accounted for there. That attendance we saw at the beginning, that was when they'd been in a school and a teacher took role and it went into the data. But when you are, uh, you know, staying at home or who knows, in a private school or whatever, it's uh, being homeschooled, you just don't know, you know, were they receiving instruction at all? And that's significant to know when they've been, they're struggling. Now in third grade, uh, we're still in the, um, we're going to a, a different school. We're leaving on September 17th, enrolling on the 18th, the next day at the a Aries School, whichever way you want to pronounce that. Uh, SST is still, uh, and then in fourth grade, same school, but notice in, in fifth grade, same school, but this time the student has been put in uh, uh, special ed, uh, SWD, student with disability. And uh, then in sixth grade, um, he goes to Drummond Middle School, staying in the same school district. And seventh grade, again, in Drummond Middle School. So this enrollment history says a lot of different schools. And I talked about the gap of time between schools. The data shows it takes students, even when they go to a new school to get up to speed, they kind of miss weeks because they don't just go in most of the time day one and are uh, very much involved in, in learning. It just kind of, they have to go through an adjustment to a new teacher, new peer group, new school. And, and th that's a transition that's difficult for most students, a lot of students anyway. Next, we have their grades. And we call this uh, data set, this is at the bottom of the student profile, the not official transcript. So um, here you will see this school district for um, uh, elementary schools uses uh, numbers like, they use letters like P and all, but there are some grades here for the last couple of years. Uh, and notice that uh, the grades, they are consistent with the way the students done on their, uh, state-wide uh, assessments, as well as the Lexi, you see a language arts grade of 39, biology 71, math 65, um, and, and, some, and then the, in 2020, again, not doing well in language arts and math, which is consistent. So here are Rodolfo's data story facts. So I'm going to kind of summarize the facts and then talk about what the teacher can do. So let's remember Rodolfo is a seventh grade male of white, not Hispanic origin. He was born on January 1st, 2022. 
His attendance trend was poor from 2014 to 2015 through 2017, 18, missing 107 days from kindergarten through fourth grade with good attendance from fifth through sixth grade. The student Lexile score history displays below grade level scores for grades three through five. The Georgia milestone scores for 2017-18 through 2019-2020 are below the beginning learner or grade level. Math scores are at the developing learner level. The student growth percentile for 2017-2018 is typical growth for ELA and math and 2018-2019 low growth for ELA and typical growth for math. Rodolfo's MAP assessment, this is the local assessment, uh, predicts a Georgia, what the MAP does, it predicts your Georgia milestone, it pre predicts SAT, it pre pre predicts ACT. So it predicted uh, for milestone that, um, uh, let me find my place, uh, a Georgia milestone developing learner achievement. His 55 percentile math and 45 percentile reading indicates performing at least as well as 55 percent in math and 45 percent in reading as other students in the same grade across the country. The My Schedule data set will assist in collaborating with Rodolfo's other teachers. The enrollment history informs that he attended kindergarten, third, fourth, and fifth grades in two different schools, which may indicate instability in his home life. Also, he was in the SST program in two separate schools in the fourth and fifth grade. The non-official transcript academic grades reflect several failing and barely passing grades. So now here is Rodolfo's teacher. She now knows how to plan to assist him in approving his literacy and learning. Rodolfo's data story provides his teacher with a detailed description of his academic journey, which explains why he has struggled in his academic subjects. The excessive absence in school transfers indicate he's currently reading below grade level. The sixth grade Lexile score of 635 is below the fifth grade range of 830 to 1010. 635 is in the third grade range. So we have a seventh grader reading at a third grade level. The Georgia Milestones ELA score and the student growth percentile indicate that he is not progressing in literacy skills. He is doing a little better in math, but needs to improve. Rodolfo's enrollment history shows a lot of moving around, which may have impacted receiving instruction in language and math. Now the teacher can differentiate instruction to focus on remediation in reading and math. So this is Rodolfo's story. If we would go to the next student on our roster, there's going to be some similarity in stories, perhaps. Uh, one thing I consistently see with students across the state is they're frequently reading below grade level. And literacy has a huge impact on all their subjects, as you know. But anyway, this is quite a lot of information. And you know, when you're looking at that student profile, this is the way to look at it. Think about what is this telling me about the student? What is this student's story? And remember, every student's an individual, and this helps you get to know them. Um, we do have a Godot community, and uh, we have groups you can join there. So uh, if you want to uh, sign up for that, uh, you can just, you can even Google uh, Godot community. <laughs> 